What's up everyone? Sam here from bitebybite.com and in this video I want to share with you three strategies that you can use to take your networking to the next level. Plus I'm going to show you the number one most important way to be likable when you meet someone new. And if you want tons more videos just like this, go ahead and give us a like and subscribe. We're releasing new videos every week. All right, so if you're like most software engineers, you probably cringe a little bit when I say the word networking. But then at the same time, you realize, hey, this is actually something that's really important. This is actually something that I probably should be doing. I just really don't want to. And so in this video, I want to help shift your perception and give you a couple strategies that you can use to network a lot more effectively. And the first thing that we're going to do is I want to shift your perception away from thinking about networking as just going to events. Thinking about networking as going and being in a crowd of people and having to walk up to random people in a room and start a conversation. Because yes, that is one type of networking, but that's not the type of networking that I'm talking about here. In fact, that's actually probably the kind of networking that I would recommend the least because it's the least likely to have any sort of real ROI. What are the chances that you go to an event and you just randomly walk up to someone who happens to be like a future colleague of yours? Yes, it happens. There are stories of this happening all the time, but it's not the most effective way to network. And especially if you're an introvert like me and so many other software engineers, it's probably a way that it's going to be a lot less effective than some other approaches. So I want to share with you three strategies you can use to network a lot more effectively. The first strategy that I want you to think about when you are networking and when you are connecting with other people is having a very clear purpose for what you are networking about. And this really breaks down into three sort of broad categories that you can consider. And that is recruiting, informational networking, and casual networking. So to break these down a little bit, recruiting is when you're reaching out to a recruiter, when you're connecting with someone at a company with the express purpose of trying to get a job at that company. So this might be you reach out to a recruiter saying, hey, I'm interested in this job posting that you had listed. And the purpose of that is really almost an interview, right? It's almost to the degree where you are sharing about yourself. You're trying to get them excited to give you an opportunity to interview at the company. The second informational interviewing is similar, but much more casual. And the idea behind informational networking is that we're not going out and we're not trying to ask someone for a job at a company. We're just trying to learn more about them. We're trying to learn more about their position, their company, whatever it is that we want to learn more about. And so what we might do with this is we might go up to someone who is in a job that we are potentially interested in. So maybe we are currently a, you know, an independent contributor and we're looking to move into a management position. We might reach out to someone who is a manager at our current company or a friend of ours who is a manager at a different company and sit down with them and network with them for the purpose of learning more about their position. Another thing that we might do is if there's a company that we think might be a good fit for us, we could reach out to someone that we know who's at that company and sit down with them for 30 minutes to learn more about the company. So that's informational interviewing where we're actually trying to gain some specific information from them. Now the final type of networking is casual networking. And in this case, we're really meeting with someone because we think they might be interesting or we think there may be some common ground, some reason to connect with them. This could be reaching out to just someone in a different department at your company. It could be reaching out to a family friend who's doing something really cool. There are a lot of potential reasons why you might do this casual networking, but the goal here is just a little bit different. And so the first thing that I want you to think about when you are networking is picking out specific people for specific purposes. Are you reaching out to them for recruiting purposes? Are you reaching out to them for an informational interview? Are you reaching out for them for casual networking? What is the reason that you're reaching out to that person? Now, the next thing that you want to do once you have figured out what is the purpose of the networking that you are doing is to do your research on the specific person. And this is why doing networking in this way where we're going to reach out to specific people and we're going to connect with people for a specific purpose rather than just going to an event and trying to meet random people is particularly valuable, right? If we know that we are going to meet a specific person, we can prepare in advance. We can get to know a little bit about them. We can research them. We can prepare questions that we think they might be especially well equipped to answer. And that makes it much, much more engaging for both parties. It allows us to find common ground between that person and us. Like we could look, maybe we like the same sports team or maybe we have the same hobby and it gives us a way to break that ice and kind of get through the front door. It also allows us to just make sure that again, we're using that time as effectively as possible. 
if we're doing a recruiting type interview, how do we really make it clear to them that we are a good fit for the company that they work for, right? How do we make it clear that they should refer us or that they should give us a chance to interview? If we're doing an informational interview, what is the most effective way that we can, what is the most effective information that we can get from them? What is the, what are the things that they know that other people don't know that we couldn't necessarily find out just by doing research online? Having that clear purpose and doing your research ahead of time is going to make that networking so much more effective. Now, the last strategy, strategy three is to practice. And this is so, so important when we're networking because a lot of times, I don't know about you, but for me, putting myself in these sorts of situations is not very comfortable. I'm not very comfortable meeting new people, going out and you know connecting with people that I haven't met before. And so the way that I got much better at doing this was just by doing it over and over and over again. What you realize is that the more you do something, the more you just get comfortable in that situation, right? The more you get comfortable with knowing what to expect, knowing kind of how to let the conversation flow smoothly. Because if you don't practice it, if you've never done this before, of course you're gonna get stuck, of course you're gonna get tripped up, and of course there are gonna be awkward moments. So you wanna make sure that when you're networking, you practice having these conversations. And there are a couple different ways to do this. One, I do actually recommend those sort of larger scale networking events for this specific purpose. I don't think that they are as productive for meeting specific people. I don't think they're as productive for getting that specific outcome, but what they are useful for is they are useful for giving you an opportunity to have a lot of conversations that are very low stakes, right? You go to a networking event and there are just lots of people. And so you can involve yourself in multiple conversations. You could practice meeting 10, 20 new people in a single night and the stakes are really low because if you are really awkward or you just screw up, then it's not really a big deal because it's not it's probably not someone who it was so important for you to make a good impression in the first place, right? You want to build that practice. You want to build that muscle so that when you do go meet people where it's important that you make a good impression, that you really stand out, that you are prepared to do that. So meetups are a great way to do this. Other good people to talk to for this are like, coworkers or people in different departments at your company or friends of friends, right? People where there is a deeper connection with them already. So they're going to more give you the benefit of the doubt, right? If you're kind of awkward, they have some connection to you. And so they want to make it work. They want to make you feel comfortable rather than meeting a complete stranger. They have none of that sort of preconceived concept of wanting you to feel comfortable. And so Practicing in these ways is really, really valuable. And I wanna give you one more sort of mental tool that you can use when practicing. And that is this idea that Tim Ferriss talks about of fear setting. And fear setting is the idea that when you're gonna go do something, you wanna stop and think, what is really the worst that can happen? Right, what is that absolute worst case scenario? And what this allows us to do is it allows us to realize that, okay, well, the worst case scenario is not actually that bad, right? Maybe the worst case scenario in a networking event is that you go and make a total fool of yourself. You say something that really offends someone or you get really um, flustered and confused and you kind of embarrass yourself in some way. Yeah, that's not great. Like we don't want to do that. But at the same time, is that really the end of the world? No, because you're probably never going to see these people again. Right. So thinking about what is that worst case scenario for you? What is the worst that can happen? And realizing that it's not that bad is a really, really good way to get yourself out of your shell and get yourself to start practicing. And finally, I want to give you a bonus tip, tip number four, that is going to help you to be much more interesting when you're talking to other people. Right. When we're networking with people, we want them to be interested in us. We want them to like to enjoy talking to us. Right. And we want them to ideally want to continue that relationship beyond that one time that we meet them. And so there's this quote from the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, which side note, I would highly recommend. But the quote is, to be interesting, be interested. And this is really, really simple, but super important when you're networking. And simply put, the best way to get other people to be interested and want you to talk, want to talk to you more is to be interested in what they are saying. Ask them questions. Really Think about what they are saying and how you can dig deeper. Give them a platform to talk about something that they're excited about. This is a great opportunity where you can bring back that research that we did. If you did some research into the person ahead of time and you understand like this person did this one specific project and they're probably really proud of that, you can ask them questions. You can dig into the technical specifics. 
kind of listen to what are the things that they are excited about? What are the things that they're sharing with you that it sounds like they would love to talk more about? And then just asking targeted questions, asking questions that show that you're paying attention, that you're focused on what they're saying, and that you want to know more. This is one of the best tips that I can give you when it comes to networking. To be interesting, be interested. Show them that you're interested in what they're sharing and give them a platform to speak more about. It. And so with that, that's all I got for you today. Remember, to network effectively, you one, have to have a clear purpose. You have to know why you're networking and who you're networking with. Two, you have to do your research. Do your research on the person. Make sure that you understand what makes them tick, who they are, and some ways in which you can connect with them. Three, practice makes perfect. Go to meetups, talk with coworkers, practice, put in those reps. And then finally, to be interesting, be interested. Show interest in the other person and make them excited to talk to you. And with that, that's all I got. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give us a like and subscribe. It really helps us grow the channel. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.